Well, I'm not too sure about anyone else, but around these parts, December seems to be computer season. People are upgrading, downgrading, changing, switching, flipping, and all matters of change when it comes to computer systems. And I just got this computer home. This is actually a Dell Inspiron, if my memory serves correct, a 570. I don't see any discerning model number on the... Yes, I don't see any discerning model number on it. Right off the bat, you may be able to tell that this computer is absolutely filthy. Someone must have used it as a cup holder of some kind. And the memory card slots and all the ports are just absolutely caked in dust. So you could definitely get a look at just how dusty this thing is. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. But before I do any of that, I'm going to take this outside. Here's the computer outside. Of course, I don't do any of the dusting inside because you really don't know where these things have been their former lives. And I fortunately happen to have an air compressor at my disposal, something I much more prefer over using those compressed gas-based air dusters, those cans of air. You only get about one cleaning out of them if it's a very dusty computer. So in this case, I could just use this uh, air compressor right here, clean this out, make sure it's completely dusted and it didn't cost me anything. very dirty portion of the computer for some reason they just had to have the bright idea of doing away with using thumb screws. I had to get a Phillips screwdriver but let's go ahead take a look inside well we got a few dust bunnies in there it's nothing too bad nothing a little blast from our air compressor can't fix air compressor meet computer Well, about 30 minutes later now, the computer's much cleaner, much more presentable than it was prior to my cleaning it with that air duster. And it is the Inspiron 570, as indicated by this little label here. This is actually an AMD Athlon 2 X3 450. It's running at 3.2 gigahertz. It's the first machine I've ever gotten with an AMD processor inside of it. It has 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and an AM785 chipset with an external ATI Radeon 4200 graphics card with 256 megabytes of RAM. So it's a pretty well equipped machine. We have two drive bays for CD DVD drives. This one actually doesn't want to open easily. The buttons are located up here on the right side but it's a little difficult to do with your hand. There we go. You can see that we just have a multi-layered DVD-RW drive in the first bay and the second bay doesn't have anything inside but it's completely empty. We have 3.5mm headphone and microphone jacks, two USB 2.0 ports. This computer does not sport any USB 3.0 jacks. And we've got a 5 5 in 1 card reader, SD card, amp memory stick and memory stick pro duo, an XD card slot and a CF card slot so Again, well equipped when it comes to using memory cards in this thing. You don't have to dig out the USB cables for your cameras, camcorders, or any other electronic devices that use flash memory. I really dislike when computer manufacturers decide to use glossy plastic for the CPU towers and screens because it looks great when you first get it, but you can see through the sands of time, it really starts showing its age by, by way of scuff marks, smudges, scratches, dents and dings and it just doesn't look all that great. We've got a power indicator light here. There is no hard drive indicator light on the outside of this machine. The power button here, which actually is almost a bit hidden. You have to look for it if this is on the ground. The Dell logo. Your AMD processor sticker and a Windows 7 sticker because this is equipped with Windows 7 Home Premium, at least judging by its certificate of authenticity on the front. And here is the rear of the computer. We've got our power supply fan, the CPU fan. The service tag is located beneath this sticky note, but because when you buy this computer new, Dell registers your first, last name, and other personal information. I've covered it up. I don't want to give anyone's personally identifiable info away. It has an HDMI output. Very convenient if you want to hook this up or use this as a home theater PC of sorts. You have a VGA output. You've got four more USB 2.0 ports, 
And I believe a 10100 network interface card, although it may be gigabit, I have not yet, I'm not all too sure about that. And this has the Realtek ALC88 sound card. Very prevalent in these machines, especially the Inspiron series. You have your audio out, your line in, your microphone in, and some controls here for a digital output, a subwoofer output, and the like. We've got a total of four bays here for PCI cards. Uh, this one looks to be sporting a uh, wireless card with two antennas. Down below here is a Connexon 56K dial-up modem. And what looks to be a date code of some kind, I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and say that this was, this was manufactured in 2011. So not a very old machine at all. I just noticed that this computer doesn't sit flush with the ground. I think one of its rubber feet on the bottom has broken off because it's just not sitting correctly. And there's the cover removed now. This is a 500 gigabyte. I'm pretty sure that this has a 500 gigabyte Seagate hard drive. I'm not sure what kind it is. I can't uh, be bothered to remove the hard drive and look at the cover and all the information on there, although I'm sure I could just use a software utility to do that. This has a 300 watt high pro power supply. A lot of Chinese writing on here, but hopefully it won't work too bad. We've got an AVC and advanced an advanced hydraulic bearing AVC computer fan for the CPU heatsink. And here are all the uh, expansion card slots. We've got one PCI Express 16 card slot, two PCI Express 1 card slots, and finally one regular PCI card slot. So really interesting that they didn't just stick with one, didn't stick with the PCI card slot on the bottom for the rest of the expansion ports so it makes it rather difficult if you want to buy cheaper peripherals like a firewire card and stick it in this machine because you have to hunt around for a PCI Express 1 uh, firewire card to fit in there but since I no longer use dial-up I could just remove the dial-up card in it and hook up the firewire card that way and here are the four gigabytes of Samsung DDR3 RAM a gigabyte each, 1,024 megabytes in all four slots. I'm not gonna lie, I already tried running this computer to make sure it worked and everything, and it does in fact do that. But for some reason, only 3.75 gigabytes are usable, not the full four, even though this is running 64-bit version. Well, it certainly isn't neat, but it will get the job done. I've got my Microsoft IntelliMouse, an old PS2 keyboard. They're hooked on into the computer via a PS2 to USB adapter, so I'm only using a single USB port. I couldn't be bothered to get a USB keyboard and mouse out. I've got my Dell 4x3 LCE hooked up to it. And now time for a power on test. Let's hope we don't see any smoke or see any flames. Okay, I don't hear anything that sounds too out of the ordinary. And again, we're we'll running, this is the Inspiron 570. Athlon 2 X3 450 processor. We've got four gigabytes of DDR3 SD RAM. Let's see what else is going on in this BIOS. I can take this off now. Okay, I don't see anything that looks too out of place in the controls either. The date seems to be a bit off though. That's nothing quick. Yep, we can see that fast boot is enabled. So the, it makes the start the BIOS splash screen go by very quickly so if you don't catch it you'll miss pressing the button to get into the BIOS so I'll probably disable that but I'll leave it on for now let's see we got some controls in here peripherals, SATA mode, AHCI okay audio controller you can enable or disable ACPI suspend type S3 and S1 AC recovery, I usually don't like the way most computers are configured from the factory to immediately power on if the power was disconnected to them prematurely before properly shutting them down. I really dislike that setting, so I'll leave that off. And we've got security, boots, yep, that's all configured as it should. And now let's go ahead and do a boot test of this machine. Let's see how fast it boots with 4 gigabytes of RAM and a triple core processor. Let's try that. A 
again it is running Windows 7 and uh, really hope it doesn't take too long to boot up it shouldn't this computer was made to run Windows 7 so it should be nearly 100% compatible okay ah this must have been used in a corporate or business environment control alt delete to log on I have not seen that used in a lot of new Windows 7 machines it was very prevalent and Windows XP days even for home users to use it but not so much nowadays as I think the settings are very much buried um, all right why isn't this okay all right let's see if I can get into the administrator account I did a test in safe mode with the uh, command prompt and did a scan of the user accounts now why is it not typing <laughs> I ran a net user command in uh, safe mode with command prompt earlier so I know which user accounts are actually on this computer this keyboard doesn't want to cooperate that's really strange enter yes that's what I'm trying to do okay I think something is messed up with this keyboard give me but a moment okay let's see now if we can uh, get into the administrator account oh, no they must have set a password on it well let's go ahead and try the oft used password no nope, that's not working Okay, looks like this is going to be a minor annoyance. Thanks to the well-known vulnerability in the sticky keys command, especially during Windows logon, you can go ahead into safe mode, get into the computer, and you can change the sticky keys executable so that when you click shift five times on the login window, it doesn't open up sticky keys, it opens a command prompt and an administrator command prompt at that. So let's see. I'm pressing there we go so we can see how we've got the command prompt and it's done just by renaming uh, the command prompt to Seth C.exe so now if all goes well I should be able to type in net user administrator this keyboard's really not having it today okay if all our hard work pays off we should get a prompt now to reset the administrator password okay type a password Okay, let's try logging in with the new password now. Here goes nothing. <laughs> the only thing that I have installed is CPU-Z. I could take a look at the internals of this machine without having to try to scour the web finding it out. Let's go into our system properties. Windows 7 Home Premium, it's Service Pack 1. And uh, 4.5 Windows Experience Index. Let's see what it scored the lowest in. Uh, graphics, yeah, this has the HD 4200 ATI graphics card. It's not a powerhouse, but it, it's much better than using integrated graphics. And we've got Microsoft Word and Excel Starter, which were only included with OEM computers, which leads me to believe that this is still the original installation. And let me go ahead and connect this to a wireless network now so we could do a little internet test. Okay, acquiring DHCP. There we go, we're connected. Let's try uh, doing some tests on here now. Try Movie Maker. See what that does. And this is a newer version of Movie Maker, I can tell. I think this is uh, from two th the tw 2012 version, which actually has some issues with AVC HD files from certain camcorders. Only good thing that the Windows Live Movie Maker has going for it is the ability to edit video from a wider collection of formats. Let's try going into Microsoft Word here. Let's see what's going on there. There shouldn't be anything too exciting. If I'm, if, my, if memory serves correct, uh, Office Starter downloads most of its components from the web on an as-needed basis, so it cuts down the installer, but you have to have the internet if you're using a component that hasn't yet been downloaded. Let's see. And another reason, another thing I will never understand about the new versions of Office is why they decided to change not only the default font from Times New Roman to Calibri, the default size to 11, but the line spacing does not make any sense because if you're like me, you don't want it to double space every time you press enter, you want it to just make a new line. So that really gets annoying if you're typing a bunch of, a bunch of things and by default it, you know, it, it, 
If you keep typing, it'll just do it as normally, but if you press enter, it skips a line and uses double spacing, which I don't like. I want it to go right to the next line, like on a typewriter. So that'll definitely need to be changed. Fortunately, I think Microsoft Word allows you to create a new, let's see here, a new format a new te from a new template. Let's see, sample templates. There's one in here that should be called a Microsoft Office 2003 look. And if we click that, yep, we get Times New Roman, size 12, we can type, and that is how it should perform. So, a little annoyance there. I'm not sure why they decided to change that. Hopefully there's not a bunch of toolbars and useless gibberish installed on useless garbage installed in Firefox. Nope. Wow, I'm really impressed. This is a pretty... Uh, pretty clean install of Windows. I'm guessing this thing didn't get much use. Oh, that's interesting. Firefox has prevented the outdated plugin Adobe Flash from running. So this must have an old version of, of Adobe Flash in it. Well, how about a UXW Bill video to christen this computer's internet activities? At least with it being in my possession. Let's try here. Sony Live Radio. Let's see if this plays. Oh, this auto-playing playlist has got to go. Can't stand this thing. All right, let's forward to a bit of motion here. Let me actually skip to a different video that has some more motion in it. Um, I have no questions in my mind this computer will be able to handle anything I throw at it. Mainly because it has an external graphics card. Yep. Oh yeah, it plays perfectly. Alright, let's do a 4K video test just to really push this computer's graphics capabilities to the limits. And this is on Wi-Fi, so it's going to probably take ages to to, uh, to buffer. Yeah, it's going to take a long time. This is on a 20 megabit connection, but it just takes ages. Oh, what's it doing? Oh. Oh, that's never a good thing. That's a bad sign. <laughs> This computer, wow, what's going on here? It's all the buttons are gone on on Firefox. Oh, this is this is really peculiar. I've never had that happen uh, in the when I've tried loading 4K videos. Okay, let's try doing this in Internet Explorer. I think it's version 11 on here. Maybe we'll have better luck there. Oh, and yes, we've got a two-minute ad. Great. Oh, whoa. Oh my, a blue screen on Windows 7. That is a first. I have not gotten one blue screen in Windows 7 in all of my like three years of using it now. That's that's that is a first. Maybe the graphics drivers need to be updated, or maybe they're possibly corrupt, because that should not happen. I suspect trying to load that 4K video, put this computer computer's graphics card to the max, possibly uh, just fouled it up enough that it didn't recover fully, as evidenced by Firefox's lack of buttons and. Uh, yeah, I'm really not sure what's going on there. Let's try this one more time. Okay, take two now. Let's try this yet again on Internet Explorer. And again, we have to deal with these stupid ads. Alright, I want to make sure I'm taping if this decides to act up again. No, but switch back to the four... Alright, let's try this one more time. Uh, it's doing it again. Oh, wow. Well. I guess this computer just can't handle 4K video. Quite possibly the drivers need to be updated. But I think that about concludes this little demonstration of this uh, Dell Inspiron 570 from what I'm assuming is 2011, at least judging by its date code. And now it's time to shut this thing down, go ahead and put it into service. Let's see how long this thing actually takes to shut down. It shouldn't take all that long though. And there we have it.